Hi everyone, my name is Alex Purnomo. I'm the pastor of Dunsat Anglican Church. Humans can be a strange mix of opposites. We are capable of really good and wonderful things, but humans are also capable of incredibly harmful, deceitful, and evil things. If we believe that God is the almighty and powerful king of all kings, and that he loves and cares for the world, sometimes we may understandably wonder why God doesn't just advance his kingdom by intervening right straight away and getting rid of all the deceitful and evil people in the world. When God appears weak or slow, we are tempted to take matters into our own hands to advance God's kingdom without any regard for his ways nor his wisdom. But if we have the eyes to see or the ears to listen, we have much to learn from the various ways God has been working in history to prepare the way for the coming of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. A great example of that was the kingdom of David in the book of 2 Samuel. As I said in my first video on, in this series, the kingdom of David was a manifestation in history of the kingdom of God. It was a shadow of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. King David was only a shadow, far from the perfection of King Jesus. But we can still learn important lessons from the way David began his reign, how he treated his enemies, and how he was opposed. And those things would help us understand God better. And that's the focus of this video number four in the series on 2 Samuel. This video is based on chapters 2 and 3 of 2 Samuel. Therefore, before you continue watching this video, please make sure that you first read those chapters. In chapter 2, we are told that the long-awaited moment in David's life had arrived. The man God had chosen to be king for himself finally ascended to the throne as king. It is a recognition and affirmation of the anointing that David had received many years earlier. Remarkably, as you can see in the book of 1 Samuel, David had kept his integrity over all these years. Despite extreme provocation from the late King Saul, David had not sought his own advantage. He had maintained righteousness and faithfulness so far. In this regard, David was also a shadow of Jesus, God's king. God's king did not grasp power out of selfish ambition. The path to their kingship was obedience to God. David didn't become king over all Israel right away, but only over the tribe of Judah, his own tribe, which occupied only the southernmost portion of the Israelite territory, although a very substantial portion. The people of Judah were behind David, but there was opposition to David from those who did not want him to be their king. One of them was a powerful man in the north named Abner, a cousin of the late king Saul, and a commander of Saul's army. Like Saul, Abner was from the tribe of Benjamin. Abner was a man of action. He rejected David as king, and he installed another king, a son of Saul by the name of Ishbosheth. Abner installed Ishbosheth as his puppet king, and by doing that, he divided the people of Israel into two camps those who received David as king and those who didn't. Just consider that. David was the king that God had chosen for himself to rule over his people. But David did not receive the welcome he really should have received. That is only a small reminder of God's own experience many years later when he came into the world. Jesus came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. They did not want him to be their king. Even after Jesus has defeated his enemies by his death, and after he has been declared to be God's king by his resurrection, many people still oppose him and do not acknowledge him as their king. So if you ever experience rejection from anyone because you trust God, please know that you are in good company. You are participating in the suffering of Christ. So back to the story. Abner was the strong man of the late King Saul. But David had his own strongman, a man named Joab, the commander of David's army, who was also one of David's nephews. Joab was also a man of action like Abner. Both Abner and Joab saw that it was not good to have two kings in Israel and have the people divided into two camps. In the second half of chapter 2, they tried to take matters into their own hands and advance God's kingdom their way. They seem to have tried to resolve the situation peacefully, but they failed terribly. Please read it yourself in chapter 2. 
Instead of finding a peaceful resolution, the best men of action from both sides only made matters worse. Their get-together turned into an unnecessary and bloody battle that cost hundreds of lives of God's people. It is important to notice that what happened that day was not David's doing. Rather, here we hear a story of human politics. A number of men attempted to have an influence on the coming kingdom of David by their own efforts. Some tried to hasten it, some tried to defeat it, some tried to turn the kingdom to their own advantage, but none of them was good enough, wise enough, or powerful enough to accomplish what they intended. Now, the Bible teaches that God has put the authorities in place for the good of human society. We should pray for them and thank God for them and honor them. But even at its best, we know that our leaders and authorities fall short of our hopes. The dreams never match the reality. We complain about them, we protest them, we blame them. Nobody are ever good enough, wise enough, or strong enough to make human communities work as we believe they should. The Bible says that is because we all are sinners. So if you place your hopes in human leaders, I can assure you, you will be disappointed. Human strategies and plans, our negotiations and proposals are no more able to bring peace and harmony, justice and righteousness than the efforts of Abner and Joab. So do not be surprised that the best human efforts achieve less than we hope for, often much less. Do not be disillusioned when what we do achieve is weak and fragile. Our only realistic hope is the kingdom of God. Back in the days of Abner and Joab, that was the kingdom of David. If only Abner and the other tribes of Israel had accepted David as the king whom God has chosen. If only Joab and his brothers and the army of Judah had trusted David to make the right call rather than taking matters into their own hands, so many people would not have died. The Bible teaches that God has promised a king who will succeed where all other human leaders have failed. He will bring perfect and complete peace, not just to one nation, not even only to the whole human race, but to all of God's creation. More than that, the Bible claims that this king has already come and has begun to reign. The king, Jesus Christ, is calling all people everywhere to come into this kingdom by changing the direction of their lives and trusting him. He will bring his kingdom in all its glory and fullness when he returns at the last day. Billy Graham was quoted to have said, We're not going to have peace, permanent peace, until the Prince of Peace comes. And he is coming. One of the casualties in the battle that day was Joab's younger brother, a man named Azael. He was killed by Abna, sort of in self-defense. You can read in chapter 2 that, Abner did all he could to avoid this killing, but Asahel's persistence in the context of the fierce battle made it unavoidable. Such an unnecessary death. Asahel was a nephew of King David, a son of David's sister. In chapter 3, we read that Abner had a falling out with his puppet king, Ishbosheth. In his anger, Abner surprisingly vowed to throw his support behind King David instead and to rally the other tribes of Israel to do the same. Abner was like so many people in every age. He knew about God's promise to David to make him king, but Abner had not wanted to believe the word of God that he had heard. He did not want Saul's kingdom to be transferred to David. He had therefore been able to convince himself against reason that there was a future for the house of Saul. His response to God's word was irrational, but it's sadly all too common. Just consider how many people have heard that Jesus is Lord, but simply do not want it to be true. But now Abner was resisting God's promise to David no longer. He used to fight for Saul, but now he went around proclaiming the good news of David's kingdom. What we do not hear from Abner is, is any confession of his own failure. I was wrong to make Ishbosheth king, or I have acted as though I were in charge of Israel, or I have tried to use my own power to defy God's purpose. These are words we never hear from Abner. He wasn't that kind of guy. 
Every indication is that Abner was self-serving. He turned to David only when it suited him to do so, and for his own purposes. The greatest surprise is the welcome that Abner received from David. A feast was prepared for him and his delegation. No judgment nor condemnation from David. David received Abner not on the basis of his ugly past, nor on the basis of his lack of integrity. Abner had been treating David as his enemy, but David treated him much better than he deserved. He showed his grace and goodness to Abner. And this is a glimpse of the nature of God's king and his kingdom. Former rebels find peace. Abner was now reconciled to David, and this depended on not on any goodness in Abna, but on the goodness of David. We can see here again how the kingdom of David was a shadow of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. In Colossians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul said that once we were alienated from God and were enemies in our minds because of our evil behavior, but now he has reconciled us by Christ's physical body through death to present us holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Sadly, Joab, David's military commander, would have none of David's gracious treatment of Abner. He was driven by revenge. When he heard that David had let Abner go in peace, he was furious. He thought that he knew better than his king, and that Abner had deceived David. So Joab took matters into his own hands and killed Abner. When David heard about what Joab had done, he condemned Joab and made sure that everyone knew that Joab had not acted in loyalty to his king, but out of his wickedness. His ways were not the king's ways. He was pursuing nothing other than his own wicked agenda, not the will of the king. This brings me back to what I said in the beginning of the video. When God appears weak or slow, we are tempted to take matters into our own hands to advance God's kingdom without any regard for his ways nor his wisdom. That's what both Abner and Joab did. But the end of Abner's story was very different from Joab's story. Most of his life, Abner treated David as his enemy, but he made peace with David. Now, of course, Abner would have had much to learn. And if he had lived longer to serve his new king, that would have changed him. But the most important change for Abner was the change in who his lord and king was. Please notice that David was responding to Abner's death by seeing it as a tragedy. David gave him a state funeral to honor him. David said at the end of chapter 3, And today, although I am the anointed king, I am weak, and these sons of Zeruiah, that's David's sister, are too strong for me. He's referring to Joab and his brothers. The word translated weak can be translated gentle. But often, gentleness can be perceived as weakness, can't it? David was comparing his own character to that of Joab and his brothers. They were too strong, too harsh, too violent. There may be a place for strong, even violent action, but not today. Today, David had been gentle. It was the character of this king. The harsh, tough characters we have seen in Joab and his brothers were unlike their king. They were hardliners who were harder than their king. And so it is with the kingdom of Jesus Christ, of which David's kingdom was a shadow. The goodness of Jesus surpasses the goodness of anyone who does anything in his name. If we serve Jesus as our king, we must not be like Joab and take matters into our own hands. Even when God appears weak or slow, we must follow God's ways and trust his wisdom and his character. We will continue the story of the kingdom of David in the next video. If you find this video helpful, please like or subscribe to our channel. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.